All right, let's talk training a little bit. But before we get started, this is not me force feeding my opinion or what I think should or shouldn't be done down your throat. It's none of that. And it's not belittling any other training companies or anyone that trains differently than what I think should be trained or what I believe should be trained. But as we get started, there's a lot of sexy, cool, fun stuff that is puts down everybody's feed, right? And I love having fun. I like the cool stuff. I like the sexy stuff. But in the current times that we live in, I think we need to focus a little bit more on basics and practicality. There's a lot of these guys that are out just CQBing, right? I know for a fact, if things go south, in America or wherever you want to imagine your post-apocalyptic nuclear fallout, whatever you want to believe in, right? If things go south, I will not be conducting CQB with my little small team because our lives are more valuable than risking it for, I don't know, the coolness or the to go in and get one individual. Now, there's always other sides to that okay maybe they stole or kidnapped or i don't know there's so many scenarios that can play out to that but i know for a fact me and like the three to seven dudes that i have always around me i don't want to go in a building i don't want to risk my guys i don't i want to mitigate any type of casualties or loss of life amongst my people i think that as a whole, we need to go back more towards like the basics or bushcraft or fighting in the woods or actual urban combat. Not particularly CQB, but more along the lines of fighting from inside of one building out to another building across the street where there's a stronghold or maneuvering from one building to the next. Not just breach banging and clearing one room or two rooms. None of that stuff. It's cool, sexy, and awesome. But it's going to be a way more broader spectrum that's going to have to be covered. And I believe that the basics, I hate i hate to say this, but the doctrine that the army developed to fight the Russian, Mongolian horde and all this other crazy stuff, it's stuff that you could probably look back on and incorporate, incorporate it into your training. Ranger Handbook is a huge tool. Now, we don't have... An entire platoon at, our, at, platoon at our disposal, right? We might have five to seven people, but still, you can always have security. You can always still do like a short little leader's recon. You can always set up a support by fire with one or two riflemen. Granted, it's ideal to have two people, but man, the enemy has a say and our manpower also has a say, right? So just think about that. I think we need to get back to training not so much flat range not so much cqb fighting from in the woods fighting from like awkward positions shooting from the back of a room all the way across like i don't know a road a bridge uh, a creek a river you know something that's going to be more probable of what's going to be happening um setting up defensive positions standoff pushing up a whole bunch of pile of woods and sticks and debris all the way around your property, right? So if you do that, I'm lazy. I know that while I was in the military, I was lazy, and I wanted to take probably the easiest route or the most um, efficient way because I'm already tired from walking 6, 12, I don't know, however many hours. So if I run into like a whole bunch of pushed up sticks and limbs and thorn bushes and all that, I'm going to be like, oh, shit, now what? And then I'm going to have to rethink how I'm going to get there stuff to t take into consideration because it's like that across the board and I'm not the only one. Um, like I said, defensive positions, that's a big thing that really needs to, you need to work on that because we don't have the manpower to be going on a full-time assault, right? We don't have the resources. We don't have the support. Defensive positions, right? Also, sustainment, 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 it's going to be a real thing. How are you going to get supplies? How are you going to make drops? How are you going to do... What are your comms plans? What's your contingencies? 
all this stuff that you need to think about if you're in the same mindset as me and countless others. Now, like I was saying, this is not a one size fits all. And this is not a, hey, Drew said it, so you got to do it or nothing like that. This is just stuff for you to think about and maybe consider in your small little teams, groups or families or whatever. First aid, basic like medical stuff like, oh, no, your kid broke a finger or broke a leg or got stung by a bee. Stuff that you got to think about, which you will not have access to. Oh, man, let me just go to this 24-7 clinic or let me go to the ER. Because when stuff goes bad, that places like that become targets and chains are diminished and things are going to get weird. You, can, you see it all the time in third world countries and in all the movies and all the post-apocalyptic movies and zombie apocalypse video games. You see it. Now... That's pretty much all I got to say, but there's a lot more to consider but other than the sexy CQB and flat range shooting real fast, which I love both of them. I love shooting fast. I love shooting for fun. Is this not going to be practical? I don't know because I, can, I can't ever think of a single time where I've done any type of shooting outside of a range where I was in a perfect position or I was prepped at the ready, hands up, hands down, or whatever, shoot ready, stand by, boom. Ne never none of that stuff ever happens it's more along the lines of, oh fuck i'm getting shot at or something just blew up and now i'm like scrambling because i'm rolling on the ground trying to not die just think about it i don't know that's all i got thanks for watching and uh i appreciate all of y'all